heed no attention to my hair, I just woke up. Hello, today I'm going to be uh, uh, talking about After Effects. Uh, not, not everything, but, but just some of the things that, that might be useful to an animator. Trying to learn After Effects or even just try to explain After Effects can sort of make you want to just... <laughs> How did I get from this to this? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you uh, my, my process of, of taking these raw ingredients and cooking up this masterpiece. So when you first open After Effects, you might be greeted with something like this. Um, you got all your projects under there in the recents, and then you got the new project and open project and all that stuff. I'm gonna click on new project because we're gonna start a new project and I'm going to save this project somewhere. Oh wait, you can't save it because the project doesn't exist yet. You gotta put in some stuff, some stuff. I'm just gonna drag in some components here that I already had. Uh, got this PNG of the ocean and a little water fish named Guido. So as you can see below here, you have this thing. It's called a timeline. It's called a timeline. And what we're gonna do with this timeline is we're gonna just it's just gonna put our stuff on it. And then the moment you put your stuff in it, you start to see uh, the layers. Here's one layer. That's for the water fish. And here's another layer for the background. So this is our timeline right now. As you can see, the animation is very short, and I would frankly like it to be a little longer. So when you look at here, you might have noticed, what is this? I didn't put that there. That's not, that, that's not mine. If you see this little icon here, that's for composition. It says composition. Basically, whatever's in here is in this. This is what is on the timeline. Whatever's on the timeline is in this composition because you're looking at the composition right here. And we're gonna talk more about what compositions are exactly. So what, we're, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to look at the original source of the water fish. I'm gonna right click it. And I'm gonna to go to interpret footage and click main. And that's gonna have this little window pop up. And uh, I'm gonna go over to loop because I want this animation to loop maybe 10 times. I'll say 10 times. And now when I go back, you see, wait, it didn't, it didn't change the, the, the size. Oh, but it did. What you wanna do now is because you didn't change the size of the composition, you gotta go over to the composition settings and then you just gotta change the duration. So if it was one second before and I changed it to loop 10 times, that it shall be 10 seconds. And now we have a 10 second long animation. And you may notice that there's this part that's in color and then this part that's like faded. That's just showing how much of the, uh, the animation you want to show. So I'm gonna just drag that all the way because I want it to be all the way there. Oh, that's an image one. It doesn't have a limit. It goes on forever. And then so, actually I want it to be like one frame less because we got a little bit of an extra part there. So I'm just gonna turn this to nine and then I'm gonna turn this to, if it's base 12, then I'll put it to 11. That's 11 frames. So now we have this lovely little animation. Wow, animation. Here are some basic principles. Uh, let's say I want to do a mask. You might be like, what's a mask? So this is the masking tool. And what it does basically is that you can uh, trap your little guy inside of a little box. It creates a sort of cutout. So you can choose to either have what's inside or what's outside of it. I'm gonna have what's outside of it because I want it to be transparent in the middle. Um, something you can also do if you want rounded edges is to click and drag. Uh, and then you can sort of play around with what shape you want. And then I'm gonna invert that, click the drop down arrows, and then see what options I have here. Um, I can feather it to make it more smooth. I like that. And then I'm gonna kind of move it around a little bit. And then I, I like that effect. So I'm gonna change the opacity a little bit. Now I want this fish to move across the screen. How am I gonna do that? Well, if you click down here, ignoring the masks, you can go to transform. And what that's gonna do is you can, you can go over here, see there's a bunch of different options. I wanna, I wanna make the position move. You see, you see I want it to go like, whoa, whoa. So what I'm gonna do is click this little timer and this timer is gonna give me keyframes. These are keyframes. I'm gonna set a keyframe here and I'm going to move all the way over to the end of the animation and set a keyframe here. 
And so now when you, no matter where you are, if you move it, it's gonna automatically give you a keyframe. So just be careful. So here I'm going to drag it all the way over here. I want it to start sort of over here. And then at the end of the animation, I want it to leave the frame. So I'm just gonna scoot it over. So now when it comes to keyframes, there's a lot of different things you can do. If I wanted to say, have it ease in or ease out, I can right click and go to keyframe assistant and you have these easing in and easing out sort of uh, options. What that basically does is that it allows you to sort of control how fast it's moving and um, it lets you control the, the easing of the animation. Whoa. Pretty cool. And if I wanted to go even further, I can click on this little thing. It's the graph editor. And this will allow me to really control the, the, the speed of, of which things are moving. Ah, yes, the concept of pre-composition. So remember when I said I was gonna talk about composition? I'm going to right click on this and I'm gonna click pre-compose. I'm gonna name this Waterfish Moving. I'm gonna click move all attributes into new composition. And what this will do is it'll take all of the effects, all the masking, all the stuff that you've done and put it into a new composition. So when I click okay, you might be like, oh, nothing changed. But notice, it's no longer a raw file, it's a composition. And all the stuff under there, all gone. So what it's gonna do now is it's gonna treat this as its own video. So now that I have this, I wanna make it sort of, uh, I wanna make it have light, give it light. What I'm gonna do first is I'm going to right click and I'm gonna click layer styles and inner shadow. And that's gonna give me this. This is an inner shadow. It's gonna be your best friend when it comes to lighting. Over here, you can see all of the inner shadow options. You can change the angle. You can change the distance. You can change the size. You can change the color. You can even change the blend mode. I'm gonna stick with multiply, that makes sense to me. A little annoying thing is that you can't put two layer styles on one object. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pre-compose it, baby. Give this composition a layer style. This time, instead of a shadow, I'm gonna give it a highlight. And so you, so you can sort of mess around with these concepts now. If you wanted the lighting to be only on a specific part of the character, you can mask it. You can, uh, you can mask that part and then like duplicate it, you know, put, put uh, a, masked, a masked version of the object with lighting on top of a version of it without lighting, and then thus create the illusion of it sort of being only on that spot. You can combine these ideas together and create truly incredible stuff. But for now, we're gonna keep it simple. Now we're gonna get into the sort of the details, the extra stuff, if you will. For example, I'm gonna go over to this little tab here, effects and presets. You're gonna have a lot, and I mean a lot of stuff in here. But for now, I'm gonna look for one of my favorites, which is the wave warp. I'm gonna drag this onto this little guy. And I'm gonna give it, now you can see, oh my God, it's jiggling. Oh my God, what is happening? That's the exact effect that I want. Simply by changing some of these, uh, these things. As you can see, once you change all of these settings, you can sort of have this effect. And you might notice that in this corner, it's kind of, um, it's, it's, it's not, there's holes, there's holes in the side. And I don't want that. That's when pinning comes in. When you pin it to the sides, that basically just tells it, don't, don't move that part that needs to stick to the wall. So now that I stuck it to the wall, there won't be any holes and it's can, it can glide over. Look at it. It's so beautiful. What a special little boy. And then, so on top of this, you can add, there are a whole bunch of other things you can do. You can add sphere eyes to give the background to like kind of give it, give it a little bit of a bulge. You can add for all, for all your particle needs, you can add a snowfall effect and you want to put snowfall effect on like the highest layer. And basically what that does is it generates snow for you. And so you can sort of change the, the size of the snow. You can change the speed. You can change the wind. You can change the spread. You can change the amount of flakes. There's a lot that you can do with this. Now, if you wanna create light rays for like under the water, this is a bit more of a process. 
I'm gonna click new solid and I want it to be yeah about this color that sounds about right I'm gonna right click I'm gonna go to effects you can see all of these effects these are all gonna be very important from blurs to noise but one of my favorite things is fractal noise that gives you this grainy texture you can sort of go to the evolution you can set some keyframes give that a good rotate and then you can give it this sort of uh, this sort of like cloudy, foggy effect. So that's, that in and of itself is already a special tool, but we're gonna take it a little further. And what I'm gonna apply to this is something called a light ray effect. If I go to this transfer mode and click none, all of a sudden you got this little speck. Now it's kind of black and awful. I'm gonna change this to a, to a lighted. And then I'm going, to sort of change the scale. You can change the intensity of the light. You can change where the center of the light is. And then all of a sudden, if you just move it a little higher, you have this beautiful, glorious ri lighting ray effect. Look at that. It's beautiful. Now, another thing, if you wanna add shadows, it, it gets a little complicated. It depends on what you want. Either you can create a solid chunk, a solid color, if you will. And then you can sort of just mask that and then just sort of move it along with the character. Or if you want a more automated method, you can copy and paste this and then sort of just move that under layer to be where the shadow would be. Now I'm gonna take this shadow and I'm gonna pre-compose it again. I know, constant pre-composing. There's a lot of pre-composing. I'm gonna call this shadow, shadow, the hedgehog. And then I'm gonna go into this pre-composition. Now here's another thing. Notice this toggle switch mode. If you ever are looking for something here, you can kind of click this and it'll give you different options for different kinds of things you're looking for. But I'm gonna stay in this general area. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go give it a solid. And it's like, ah, it's covering the whole thing. If you click this little T, that'll keep it inside the object beneath it. So now that, that color only exists inside of here. And you might be seeing where I'm going with this, but when you go back and you change this to maybe a multiply, all of a sudden you have this shadow. That shadow is looking a little sharp. Let's give this a blur effect. I like to use fast box blur. I feel like that's the fastest blur you can have. And now, you've got this wonderful little shadow under it. Now, I know that this tutorial has kind of been all over the place, kind of like my hair. These tools, once you get used to it, can actually be really helpful in getting the effect that you want. And by combining all of these things, you can result with something like this. That's incredible. I will link a bunch of tutorials uh, that I found useful in the description in case you want to hear uh, people who are better at explaining things than me talk about this very topic. I hope that this tutorial wasn't too much of a mess. I'm sorry that it was kind of all over the place, but if it was helpful, let me know in the comments. And if it wasn't helpful, don't, don't say anything, please.